Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom, and I'm Jacob. And today we're going to talk about video games. And I think、uh, most of you out there have experience with playing video games. I don't really play them so much. I think they're too addictive、mm. and they waste too much time. But I can understand why people want to play them. I guess they're a way to wind down after an intensive day at work or at school. Are you a video game junkie?、Uh, Jacob? No, I'm not. But I was in the past. Now. Uh, I'll tell you a little secret. Tom and I we do、uh, some voice acting, and one time we did voice acting for a video game. Oh,、uh, I remember that.、Yeah. And yeah, we had a lot of fun. And well, I kind of, you know, was curious about the game because I'm not someone who plays video games on on their cell phone or their smartphone. So I downloaded the game, and I started playing. And you know what, Tom? I actually started playing a lot.、Ooh. It, you know, in the beginning, it was oh, I want to hear my friends' voices on the on the video game, but then it became no, I I actually just liked playing the game, and I played it for about a year or so, and then I realized I was wasting too much time on this video game, and I have to stop. Oh, so you had to withdraw from the game, and you probably had withdrawal symptoms, yeah, like people do when they try to quit smoking or whatever.、Hmm. So indeed,、uh, video games can be. Addictive, so be careful there. But、uh, we're actually going to talk about something called a logo, which is kind of like the symbol for the game, the name of the game, and how that kind of protects the game from being pirated. It's a very interesting concept, and as we're going to find out,、uh, it does have to do with Taiwan a little bit here. Taiwan played a role in starting it, so let's find out what this is all about. Let's read the entire contents of our lesson now one time. When you turn on a Nintendo Switch, the first graphic you see is the Nintendo logo. Likewise, you see the PlayStation logo when starting a Sony console. These logos aren't there just for your amusement; they're actually a tradition going back decades. What's more, Taiwan played a role in starting it. The story began in 1989 with the release of Nintendo's first portable console, the Game Boy. Nintendo wanted absolute control over what games were licensed and available on its systems. In most countries, such as Japan and the U.S., strong copyright laws that made it a criminal act to make unauthorized copies of a game existed. At that time, however, Taiwan didn't recognize foreign copyrights. On the other hand, Taiwan did have strong trademark laws. This meant that in Taiwan. It was illegal to use another company's name as your own. This gave Nintendo an ambitious idea. It placed the Nintendo logo in the code of each Game Boy game cartridge. When the system powered on, it scanned the cartridge to look for and display the logo. If it wasn't found, the system wouldn't start. By incorporating its logo into the cartridge code. Nintendo forced anyone who made a Game Boy game, official or unofficial, to use it. But its use by unlicensed developers constituted unauthorized use of the Nintendo trademark. Nintendo thus had an adequate legal reason to go after manufacturers of unlicensed games. Taiwan's copyright laws have improved since then, but the start screen logo remains. Welcome back, everyone. We are talking about video game systems and why you see a logo when starting your game system. Okay, so a logo is basically the symbol of a company.、Uh, when you think of famous logos, you might think of Nike,、uh, the Nike swoosh on the side of the the sneaker or on the T-shirt.、Uh, that's a very famous logo. Tom, can you think of any other? Famous logos. Well, Adidas has the stripes there. That's kind of a copyrighted logo. Of course, the Golden Arches of Arches of McDonald's,、mm. and many local companies have logos as well. Acer Computer,、uh, Asus has a certain way of writing its、uh, name and stuff like that. So those are all examples of logos. And yes, when you start playing a video game, you will see the logo of the company when you start that game. So yeah, if you turn on an Nintendo game, then the Nintendo logo will appear on the screen before the game comes up. Okay, so let's jump in with our first paragraph here. When you turn on a Nintendo Switch, 
Okay, a Switch is a Nintendo game console. Uh, C O N S O L E. It's the system that you play the games on. When you turn on a Nintendo Switch, the first graphic you see is the Nintendo logo. Okay, we talked about what a logo is. The graphic is basically a picture. It's something you see.、Uh, We talk about now、uh, graphic novels. So when we think of a novel, we think of words, right? Words on a page, and that's how you get the story. But a graphic novel is more a novel of pictures. I kind of think of it as a really long comic book, right? A comic book that's a, a, a you know, it could be in a very thick form. So yeah, a graphic novel would be a novel with lots of pictures in addition to words. So here, the first graphic or the first picture you see is the Nintendo logo. Yeah, I see that in advertisements on YouTube videos all the time. The Nintendo logo, of course, they're trying to advertise that product. But I think you know what we're talking about. I think it's kind of red and blue in color. I don't know the rest of it here, but that is the Nintendo logo. And likewise, also, you see the PlayStation logo when starting a Sony console. So remember, there are different gaming consoles out there.、Uh, there's Sony. Oh、uh, wait! The PlayStation is Sony. Then there's Nintendo, and I think there's something else. But I'm、uh, not Xbox, Xbox, which is the, mi- the Microsoft Xbox. Okay, very good.、Uh, you know more about that than I do because、uh, I pretty much stay clear of video games.、Hmm. But in any case, here, yes, when you turn on your system, when you click the button, you will see this graphic. You'll see the logo of Nintendo, or you'll see the Sony logo or the PlayStation logo if you're using a Sony console. And of course,、uh, when you play video games. You're not using your PC or your smartphone. You have a special、uh, unit, a special,、uh, I guess, control, a controller. I guess it is.、And、that's your console, and then you have the actual hardware, and it's totally separate from a computer. You hook it up to a TV or something. So that's your console. Right. Okay. These logos aren't there just for your amusement. Okay. So you might wonder why, why am I seeing this when I turn on my console? I see the logo or the graphic、uh, of the company. These logos aren't there just for fun, just for your amusement. They're actually a tradition going back decades. Okay. So this is something that started a long time ago. A decade, of course, is ten years. And this is a tradition going back decades. So if we have one decade is ten years. If you have decades, then well, it could be twenty or even thirty years. So this is a tradition that started many, many years ago. Uh, right, and I guess there's a reason for that, but、uh, I just thought it was、uh, just like movies. When you go see a movie at a movie theater, they of course will show the logo of the studio, you know,、mm-hmm. Universal, sure, or、uh, what's the other 20th Century Fox or whatever. They'll show that stuff first before you actually start watching the movie. So yeah, you'll see the logo appear on the screen, but this is a tradition going back. A long time, and what's more, or in addition, Taiwan played a role in starting it. So that's where you might get interested in this topic. There, what does Taiwan have to do with this? Well, let's go back to the year 1989. The story began in 1989 with the release of Nintendo's first portable console, the Game Boy. So Nintendo has had various consoles over the years.、Uh, the one I'm most familiar with is the GameCube.、Um, My、uh, brother-in-law gave、uh, gave us a GameCube many years ago because、mm. he bought the Wii console. Okay. Uh, and uh, that's the only one I'm、uh, familiar with, but、uh, they keep changing every couple of years because people want new things. So the Game Boy was a console that came out way back in 1989. Some of you might remember it. I do remember it.、Um, I enjoyed playing Tetris on the Game Boy.、Really? Yeah, back in 1989, I was a I was just a, a, a young teenager back then. And yeah, Tetris, of course, is the game with the falling blocks, and you try and arrange them、uh, in a line. And when you make one line, the the blocks will then disappear. It's a pretty popular game, or it was a popular game. Now, the thing about the Game Boy. 
It was portable,、uh, which meant you could take it with you. You could carry it around. A lot of game consoles these days, like the、uh, the Xbox,、uh, let's say, or the PlayStation, these are not portable. They have to sit in your living room,、uh, connected to your TV. You can't take them with you. Something that's portable means you can take it with you. We talk about a portable stereo, right? That's a stereo system that you can take with you, and you can play your music outside. You can take it to the gym.、Uh, you can take it anywhere to the The park because it is portable. Okay, so right, the Game Boy was portable, and Nintendo wanted absolute control over what games were licensed and available on their systems. Okay, so right, if you're a company, you want control over things, and Nintendo wanted control over what games were licensed. When you license something, you allow for something. You give permission. Uh, for someone to use or do something, okay. So Nintendo wanted to have control over what games could be played on their systems. So they didn't want just anyone being able to make a game and you could play it on the Nintendo. Nintendo wanted to have final say, so they would license、uh, who could make games for their game system. Yep,、uh, they、uh, made people ask permission or to、uh, pay some money so they could use those games. So they were licensed and only available on their systems. And in most countries, such as Japan and the United States, strong copyright laws that made it a Criminal act to make unauthorized copies of the game existed. So again, in Japan and the U.S., they had strong copyright laws. They existed; those laws existed, and those laws made it a criminal act. They made it illegal to make unauthorized copies of those games. So you know what a copy is, but if it's unauthorized, then you're not supposed to be doing it. Okay, and if you do it, you're breaking the law. And if you get caught, you could be severely punished.、Mm, that's right. Think about downloading movies or downloading TV shows.、Uh, I know some people might like to do that,、uh, but that's actually illegal. Uh, in a lot of places, you're doing something that's unauthorized. That means that the movie studio or the TV production company or the TV channel, they haven't given you permission to download or to watch this movie or this TV show because you're not paying them anything. So this is illegal because you are doing something that is unauthorized. It's not allowed. Okay, that brings us to the midway point in today's lesson. Let's take a break now and listen to our Chinese teacher. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 大家好，我是派老师。今天讲解的是一月份 Unit Thirteen. Why you see a logo when you starting your game system? 这是一篇扣漏字选择的练习题，内容与任天堂有关。回顾任天堂历史，过去在台湾盗版。仿冒猖獗的时代，他们为了保护自己的智慧财产，免于侵权损害，巧妙的在游戏卡带当中运用了商标。好，我们现在一起来看看学习重点。第一段，我们先看到第一题，前文提到任天堂 Switch 一开机，你看到的第一个图像是任天堂的商标，而第一题空格后的句子文意是。Sony 游戏主机启动的时候，你会看到 PlayStation 的标志。由于前后句的情况都是一样的，不论是任天堂或是 Sony， 启动后先看到的都是游戏业者的商标。所以第一题选 D，Likewise 来连接两个句子。第二段回溯这种传统做法的起源，任天堂对于游戏机上能玩的游戏力求绝对控制权。接着，请看第二题的句子，在多数国家，比方说日本、美国，逗点之后的句子结构稍微复杂了点，请同学注意听。著作权法 （Copyright Laws） 后面有个关系子句，其中的关系子句。它的关系代名词哦是 that 代替著作权法 copyrights， 而后请同学注意 it 是虚受词，所代替的是后面的不定词片语 to make unauthorized copies of a game， 制作游戏的未经授权复制品，也就是制作盗版游戏卡带。我们现在看一下整个关系子句的文意，强而有力的著作权法。让制作盗版游戏卡带成为犯罪行为。接下来四个选项 
A existed, B delay 或呃就是延误或者呃延期的意思。刚刚这个 A existed 是存在的意思。再来 C resist resist 是反抗抗拒的意思啊。最后呢啊，我们看一下这个 D 这个 leak leak 是什么意思呢？就是泄露的意思。好，所以这一题第二题，我们答案呢是选 D。We're going to take a short break now, but please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Thank you for that expert explanation. And now we're going to continue talking about、uh, video games and why we see a logo when we start the game system. Okay, so remember, we're going back to the year 1989, and Nintendo released its first portable console, the Game Boy. They wanted complete control over their games, so they licensed them only to people who wanted to use those games. If you made unauthorized copies of those games, then you were in trouble. Now, at that time, however, Taiwan did not recognize foreign copyrights. Okay,、uh, remember Taiwan does things differently because of the political situation and for other reasons. And at that time, Taiwan said, "Ah,、eh, we're not going to recognize those foreign copyrights. What do they have to do with us? We just want to play those games. So forget you guys. We don't care." Right. So basically, what this means is that if you had a Game Boy. Uh, you could go to、uh, a night market, or you could go somewhere, and you could buy a fake game, a game that wasn't made by Nintendo, and you could put it in your Game Boy, and probably chances are, you could play it, even though it wasn't a real Nintendo game. And of course, Nintendo won't be making any money from this sale.、Mm. Okay, if you bought the, if you bought it at a night market or at a store or something like that, and so that's why Nintendo would be upset because, as a company, if they don't make Money, they don't get a profit, and then、uh, they will actually be losing money by you playing an unlicensed game. Okay, so Taiwan didn't recognize foreign copyrights. They let basically anyone. Uh, make make games to be played on、uh, on the Game Boy. Okay, so it wasn't illegal. You wouldn't get in trouble if you were caught、uh, doing this because, according to the Taiwan government, well, yeah, we don't we don't agree with your copyright. We don't we don't recognize it. Let's say we don't accept it. On the other hand, Taiwan did have strong trademark laws. Okay, so a trademark, of course, is something that a company owns. It could be a, a, a graphic, it could be a logo, it could be a picture of something,、uh, and、uh, the government will say that. You, the company, owns that, and you can't copy that. You can't use that. Okay, so on the one hand, Taiwan won't recognize a foreign copyright, but it will recognize a trademark. A trademark, right? So, of course,、uh, if you see Google with all the different colored letters and stuff like that, that will be a registered trademark. So you can't use that yourself, or you'll get in trouble. And Taiwan did have strong trademark laws back in 1989. So this meant that in Taiwan, it was illegal to use another company's name as your own. So I guess、uh, they didn't really care if you copied the video game, but if you copied the name of the company, like Nintendo or Sony. Or whatever, then that was illegal. Okay, for some reason they didn't like that at the time. They said, "Nope, you cannot copy someone else's trademark." And so, of course, if you did that, you would get in big trouble. So, what happened as a result of that? Well, this gave Nintendo an ambitious idea. Okay, something that's ambitious. It's kind of grand, almost G R A N D. It's it's big. Okay, if you have an ambitious plan, you have a big plan. Like I could say, oh, my ambitious plan for 2022 this year is to climb Mount Jade. Okay, I'd love to go hiking and climb Mount Jade. Why is this an ambitious idea or an ambitious plan? Well, because the the highest mountain I climb would be say Elephant Mountain or Xianjian or something like that. Okay. So something that's ambitious is grand, something on a large scale, something very, very big. Okay, so Nintendo had an ambitious idea. It placed the Nintendo logo in the code of each Game Boy cartridge. 
Okay, so it placed its logo, its company logo, in the code of each Game Boy game cartridge. Now the cartridge is actually like a small plastic、uh, cassette, even or or a small plastic box, a, th- a thin box that you would then put into the Game Boy、uh, to play. Do you remember、um, recently when you go to、uh, a mall or something, you might see that Pokemon? Uh, game stand-up game. Now that has the same thing. These little cards, these Pokemon cards. They're not made out of paper, but they're made out of plastic. They're like discs. Okay, that's the same idea as these Game Boy games. They were on, they were on these cartridges or these small discs. Right, and of course they use this code of the logo, so that might be kind of encrypted or something like that. So they had the code in the Game Boy cartridges. So when the system powered on, it scanned the cartridge to look for and display the logo. So if the cartridge was manufactured by Nintendo, the logo and the code would be there, and you could play the game no problem. But if you had a pirated version of the game, the system would scan that cartridge, and it probably would not. Not be able to find the logo because of the coding there, and therefore, if it wasn't found, the system wouldn't start. So that was Nintendo's ambitious idea, and it looks like it actually worked. Right, because remember, if you then use the Nintendo logo, if you put that in the game that you make. Okay, even though Taiwan doesn't recognize the copyright, it does recognize the trademark. It says you cannot use another company's name on your product. That is against the law, and you can be in big trouble. You can be fined, or you know, who knows? Maybe even worse if we find that you're using another company's name in your product. Okay, so by incorporating its logo into the cartridge code. Nintendo forced anyone who made a Game Boy game, official or unofficial, to use it. Okay, so to incorporate something is to to make use of it, to include it. Okay, to include something as part of something else. So by incorporating or or using its logo、uh, into or on the cartridge code,、uh, Nintendo forced anyone who made a Game Boy game、uh, to use it. Okay, so Nintendo was saying, right? If you're, if the game is going to be played on our system, it's going to have to have our logo. If our logo doesn't show up, you won't be able to play the game. Indeed. So that's what they did here. They incorporated the logo. They, incru- they included it in the cartridge code. And so, if you made a Game Boy game. Whether it was official or unofficial,、uh, you had to have the logo in there. And if you had it in there illegally, then you were in trouble. If it was legal, if you were licensed, then you were okay. But its use by unlicensed developers constituted unauthorized use. Of the Nintendo trademark, so yes, unlicensed. If you did that by pirating, well, that constituted unauthorized use. So here we've got the word constitute, and of course, this is the past participle. It constituted, or it's the past tense actually. It constituted, or it was considered unauthorized use of the Nintendo trademark, and you could be sued for lots and lots of money. You'd be in big trouble if you couldn't pay the fine. They would throw you behind bars. Ooh, that does not sound good. So Nintendo thus had an adequate legal reason to go after manufacturers of unlicensed games. Okay, right. So they had an adequate legal reason.、Uh, it was good enough. It was acceptable. Okay, if you want to sue someone,、uh, or if someone is that you feel that they're doing something wrong towards you, you need a legal reason. You need an adequate legal reason. You can't just say that you don't like that person because that won't stand up in court. You actually have to have proof、uh, or a、uh, a legal reason、uh, to do this. Something that's adequate then is acceptable. Uh, good enough.、Uh, it will hold up. Okay.、Uh, if you get home late, and or say no, let's say you don't hand in your homework,、uh, and your teacher asks you, "Hey, where's your homework? Why didn't you hand it in?" You need an adequate excuse. You, you need an adequate reason to tell your teacher why you didn't do your homework. If your reason isn't adequate enough, if it's not acceptable, then your teacher will probably.、Um, 
you know, do something, punish you, you might get into a little bit of trouble for not doing your homework. Right, and of course, the opposite of adequate is inadequate. So yeah, you might complain that your office has inadequate supplies. You don't have enough supplies there. But again, back to the、uh, conversation or the article here, they had adequate legal reason. They had enough legal reason to go after manufacturers of unlicensed games. They could take them to court. They could、uh, sue them, and the manufacturer. Would lose a lot of money. They'd probably go bankrupt.、Mm. So Taiwan's copyright laws have improved since then, but the start screen logo remains. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Let's listen now to our Chinese teacher. 承接前一段，本段第一句说明。然而，当年台湾并不承认外国著作权。不过，台湾的确有商标法。接着，请看第三题。这意味着在台湾使用另一家公司的名称。冒用为自己的是非法的。答案选 D S S 有作为的意思。针对当时台湾特殊的法治环境，任天堂想出了一项妙计。他们在每个 Game Boy 游戏卡带的城市码中放上任天堂的标志，游戏启动，那就会开始扫描卡带寻找标志，并且显示在屏幕上。如果找不到，系统就无法启动。接着，请看第四题：任天堂把商标置入卡带城市码里，强迫空格使用商标。从前后文以及提示选项来做推敲，这里表达的应该是任何 Game Boy 游戏卡带的制作人，不论是官方授权或非官方授权，都必须使用商标。因为空格前面的动词是及物动词 forced 强迫，我们需要名词当受词，所以选 B anyone who who 作为关系代名词 ，anyone who made a Game Boy game official or unofficial 表示任何制作 Game Boy 游戏的人，无论是官方的或是非官方的人。但未经授权的软体开发商使用商标，就构成了任天堂商标冒用。最后第五题，任天堂因此有充分合法的理由可以空格未授权的游戏制造商。我们根据前后文文意，第五题选择 C， go after 追究。A turn down 是拒绝的意思。B speak up for 是为谁而发声。D Make way for 是让路给什么人？以上就是我们针对这一篇克鲁兹选择所做的解题讲解。谢谢大家。That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us. And、uh, hey, enjoy your video games. But remember, there are times when you need to pull back from those devices and actually have a conversation with somebody. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Jacob. Goodbye. Bye. -bye.